Hi, this is Ellen McCauley in Syracuse, New York. And I say that because I've got like 20,000 hits and there's people watching the blog from all over the place and I didn't start it right away. So it is a very popular blog. So thank you for watching. And tonight we're witnessing about our journey with Pray It Off. We're on the table too. And I have a special place in my heart for anyone who's been in this group since session one. Because when you make a commitment to join something, it's like many things in our lives, you know. Ever see a gym membership in January? The parking lot, you can't even get in. January 3rd, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. By March, it's like a ghost town. Where, where are all those people? But when you see that you have people in this group that have been here, this is our five and a half years. At the end of this session, it will be six full years. Besides work and being married, I don't know how many of us have done something for six straight years. That's, that's phenomenal. And the first person that, that I'm going to have witness from table one, two has been on this journey with us since, since table one, since session one. And I'd like to invite Karen Prischello up to do some witnessing from table two. I was one of the first members that came through the doors through session one, and I just happened to see it in the bulletin, and what caught my eye was free. Didn't have to pay anything, because my biggest qualm with, I've been to Weight Watchmen and all these other groups, how much money do you spend on those things? And you're, you're there for a while, and you do lose the weight in that, but it suddenly it creeps back on, but you're still paying the money for it all and everything. And I have been a heavy kid, I have been heavy all my life, so I figured, well, this is just one more thing. It's free, so I have nothing to lose, so I'll just go and see what it's like. What I found was, it was a lot of fellowship, it was a lot of time for me to reflect on myself, I give myself time every week um, to just think about me for an hour, and that really helped because I think for a lot of us, a lot of times, our weight is like that junk drawer in our house, we just keep pushing the stuff in there and we shut the drawer as fast as we can, and it gave me time to reflect and look and see where I wanted to go with myself and how I wanted to take care of my health. I mean, at that time, I really didn't have any severe health problems, thank God, that um, I had to need medication or anything for. I was just heavy, and I needed to lose, you know, between 40 and 50 pounds. And so it was like chipping away at granite, Ellen would say. Every week, you'd, another pound, another two pounds. But it kept adding up and adding up. And to the point where I'm not at my goal weight yet, but I'm 40 pounds lighter than I was when I walked through the door. And I feel very good about the fact that, you know, it's been a gradual lifestyle change. It didn't happen overnight. It's going to be six years of January, and when I went and started in January, I wasn't exercising the way I do now. I mean, I exercise every day. I love Zumba. I go to Zumba. I mean, I'm a fanatic. If anybody wants to come, I'll, I'll take you with me and you can join. <laughs> but, I mean, those are things I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have tried doing hula hoops, or I wouldn't have tried doing aerobics, or jogging, or any of those things. Um, and so those are things now that I find part of my interest that they didn't have before. I wasn't a person that moved a lot. Um, I was more cerebral, I guess. Um, but the other thing is I changed um, my choices of food. It just was a gradual change. I found out, you know, with my health and that, that I have a gluten sensitivity that I really didn't recognize until I started losing the weight and having other issues and that, that I did have that. And I'm much better off now trying to stay away from gluten. I tried... Now I'm staying away from more dairy and things like that. So I mean, it's just a gradual thing. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen tomorrow, um, weeks, months from now. But within six years, I mean, if you're still standing here in that, and we hope you all are, um, the fact that you have fellowship and you have support, and that every week is a new beginning, is a great thing to look forward to. And the fact that you put God in the mix makes it all better. Amen. knows me knows I'm doing everything in my power not to like succumb to a bundle of tears because these witnesses are so powerful. I'm going to take a little break with session with table two right now and I'm going to bring up someone that this is very difficult for her to um, do public speaking and when I she's she's lost 80 pounds and kept it off for years from pray it off and she's witnessing tonight even though it's difficult for her because she wants to let new members and seasoned members as well 
hear what she has to say about the group. And even though she's not at tables one, two, or three, I said she could do it tonight to get it over with. <laughs> Come on up, Judy Frank, 80. Nationally, her husband hit a hole in one. It yeah. um, I'm going to tell a story that I don't think even Ellen knows. Um, most of you have started your weight loss after you met Ellen. I actually started mine uh, just a little bit before I did. I went to a doctor, and she was a new doctor. And everybody I met before, they always said, you need to lose weight. Yeah, well, duh. Okay. This lady was so kind. She obviously read my records before I went in, and she brought me into her office. Not the examining room, but her office. And I sat at the other side of this big desk. And she said, do you want to lose weight? And I said, yeah. She said, I'm going to help you. Not just, you got to do it. I'm going to help you. I said, okay. So she said, let's pretend you're buying a car. No, it's going to be, you're buying a car. And we're going to pick it out together. We're going to go get it. We're going to kick the tires. We're going to do it together. We're going to lift up that hood. I'm going to show you what's under it. So you'll know what you need. Okay. But we did it together. Hypothetically. <laughs> then she says, now, let's pretend we're driving. Let's pretend I'm sitting next to you. Do you want me to grab the wheel? Um, no. She says, then you've got to drive the wheel. You've got to take that wheel yourself. And I thought, hmm, that was kind of different. But I took the wheel. And that was the first time I guess I ever took the wheel. She made me look at, look at it differently. So I drove the car. I took the wheel. And about a month later, I went in and I lost 10 pounds. So she was glad. She says, good. So then I joined Peel. And then I went back about a month later, and I had lost another 10. And she said, wow, that's great. And then I went back about another month later, and I lost another 10, and she's ready to check me out and find out what's wrong with me. And I said, no, really, I'm okay. So I explained what PO was all about. So since then, I've been driving the car, and I know I've got to stay straight because I've got a cop behind me. And that cop's got a little red bubble and a little red pen in her hand. So the cop's name is Ellen. So it's not what I've done, but it's like, what people like Ellen has done for me. It's like what people like Jean has done. It's what my table has done. It's what all the support that you get here at PO. And it works. But the way it works is you've got to come. Because I know if I don't, my, my 80 pounds is going to go right back on. And I know a lot of people in the room, <coughs> they might see me at parties and go, how can Judy eat that? <laughs> And keep your weight off. It's because I know if I zig or I zag, I'm on cruise control for the rest of the week <laughs> and the rest of the day. And I might zig because I know I've accounted for that, you know, that night or that lunch. And I'm on cruise. <laughs> and that's the only way you can do it. And you, you, you've got to. And you've got to come. And if, if you're... If you don't come, that's really the most important part. And you just, you gotta come, and it's, it's not what I've done, it's just really what everybody else has done for me. I love her so much. I love everyone in the group so much. And you know, I work full time, and I come here because I too believe in the group, and that's so true. If you zig, the beauty of Prayed Off is you have accountability and you say, whoa, Friday night I had some extras, 
but I'm going to now have that burger without a bun. I don't even care for buns. I don't care for mayonnaise. You change. That was beautiful. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have Mary Ellen Bogert from table two do her witness because she's not going to be here. But net, I'm going to stop. Don't panic, table three and the rest of two. I'll have you do, do next week because after Mary Ellen, we're going to listen to a song and then I want you to have enough time for small group because guess what you're going over in small group, everybody? The, the rules. rules. Come on up, Mary. Let's hear it from Mary Ellen. I, I was a little puzzled that Ellen asked me to come. I have quite a goal. I have quite a goal, but I've lost 20 pounds. At a point in time, I weighed about 233 pounds. I'm not going to tell you what I wear now, but I am doing much better. And I kind of like what somebody said about a cop. That's what I said when Ellen asked me to say something. My explanation of a cop is this whole place, not just Ellen. It's the table. It's everything that we need to do. And I know for myself, I have a few issues health-wise. Tony says, I don't have to take Lipitor anymore. I was on 80 milligrams of Lipitor. Now I take none. And it's only this weight that I've lost. But I couldn't do it over all these years. I've always needed help. I think the people here and the plans that Ellen is telling us to follow really work. You need to come, you need to move a little more. And I whined a lot, oh, I can't do that. I have rheumatoid arthritis. You have to move, even if it's in the chair. I don't get out and do these bike rides and everything else. I still am not able to do that, but I am doing Ellen moves, like she says. You can do anything if you try. And I'd like to just give her a compliment because she sticks with me even when I whine. I love it. <laughs> and I would like to read this because I sincerely mean it. It's called A Moment for You because you're one of the miracle workers, Ellen. It says, yes, you, every day, you lift spirits just with your smile. You chase my loneliness away when I'm whining just by listening. You breathe life into somebody else's dreams by helping them along and keep encouraging us. You ease somebody's burden by carrying some of it yourself. We can all see Ellen every week here. I'm getting red, because, but I really feel this. She carries a lot of our weight on her shoulders. So please, help me, and I want to help all you guys. I'm praying that we keep at this, keep coming, keep moving, keep eating. It's a little bit of a struggle, like someone said here that lost 80 pounds. But we have to be the drivers. We have to let Helen, Ellen help us. With a few heartfelt words, she turns somebody's mood, day, week, every year, completely around. You might not realize it, Ellen, but it's really true. You make the world a better place just by being you. So thank you very much. And everybody so deeply moved and I also want to mention especially to the session 12 people that when I started when Karen walked in here that first night to see who was leading the group I weighed 370 in 2007 but I had gotten way down to 338 so here she is sitting there going now when's the weight loss leader going to get here because I see that 338 pound woman up there it can't possibly be her why do you think I have such affection for session one people? Because we did it for together. And you might look at me now and go, she don't look much like Twiggy, and I don't, and I never will. And I am work. I I'm a member. The Grecian <laughs> hair formula for men. I don't just facilitate this group. I'm a member. So no one knows. No one knows how you feel more than me. I've used every excuse, everything. I, and what really made me mad is when I, when I had a hysterectomy that I couldn't say it was my time of the month anymore because that was my favorite one. I'm a little bloated, you know. So we're going to do some more witnessing. I'm going to stop right there, Bob. I want everyone to prayerfully listen to the lyrics